You know, I get this question a lot. How do I feed multiple tanks with one CO2 setup? And we will answer that right now in this A to your Q episode. Hey guys, welcome to another A to your Q episode. I'm Chung from The Water Box and hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Hit the like button if this video helps you in any way. So I've been asked over the years while doing this YouTube channel about how to feed multiple tanks with one CO2 setup. And I decided to finally make a video about it because I keep answering this question. I keep having to type it out and rather than do that, I could just direct them to this video because I'm a lazy bastard. We simply use something called seal two splitters. It's really easy to get, it's really cheap. You get them on eBay or Amazon. Links down in the description below. There are affiliate links and they come in various splits, you know, two, three, four, five, even up to, I think I've seen six or eight. Now this should work well with any pressurized CO2 system that has enough PSI to push through all those manifolds to those different multiple tanks. So this will not work for, again, do-it-yourself CO2. Though, let's just be clear, maybe you can split do-it-yourself CO2 with those little Y connectors, things like that. But honestly, I don't think it will work. Only because the pressure from those do-it-yourself CO2 bottles fluctuate. There's, it's really random. That's why you get into these really oddity behaviors when you use do-it-yourself CO2. Putting one on is pretty easy. You just stick it on your regular. Here, let me show you how. Here I have a two-way splitter. Basically where the output of the needle valve goes, I just screw it in there. All you have to do is simply screw it into the regulator. Now in this example, it's just a two-way splitter, but if it's more of a splitter, you notice that you might not get proper clearance. That's why you have to use the extender bar that comes with the splitter. And most splitters come with an extension bar, as you can see here. And since the splitter comes with its own needle valves for each output, I turn this needle valve here on the regulator all the way up. That way I'll control the flow between whatever manifold it to which tank it's going out to. Now, going out from the manifold itself or the splitter itself, you have the option, either just put it into line and then go into an inline bubble counter or into your tank if you're not using a bubble counter. Why aren't you using a bubble counter? Or you have the option of actually just sticking bubble counters on the splitter itself. That way you can control the bubbles per second over at the manifold's needle valves. The other option is using CO2 manifolds that people use to make beer. Now the problem with those, even though it will work, you don't have a needle valve, you have something like a lever. And it's really hard to control the bubbles per second that way. So even though you can use one of those, I don't know if it's any cheaper, it's actually not cheaper. I would suggest using them because you have no control over the bubble count. That's it. If you want to learn more about the CO2, check out the CO2 series here. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit that like button if this video helped you in any way. Love you guys and I will see you in the next video.